In this video, I want to explore how to compute the limit of a piecewise function. Particularly, I'm going to be interested at the switching numbers. That is, those numbers for which the function changes its behavior. Because after all, the piecewise functions we're going to encounter in a typical calculus course, you're going to see some type of nice pre-calculus function, some nice pre-calculus function. That is, this is what we call an elementary function, a function created by using the algebraic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents. We can also use transcendental functions like exponentials, logarithms, trigonometric functions, their inverses, uh, composition, any, any type of combination there, right? We have these elementary functions. And a piecewise function is going to be pieced together these different pieces. Now, in terms of calculating limits, if you're looking for any number in the domain that's not associated to a switch, like if you look at x equals 3, then a little bit to the left of x equals 3, it looks like 8 minus 2x. A little bit to the right of x equals 3, it still looks like 8 minus 2x. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x here, this is just going to be the same thing as the limit as x approaches 3 of 8 minus 2x. Because near, near x equals 3, the function just looks like a line. You don't see you don't see the square root part when you're near x equals three. I mean, so then the fun the limit calculation would just be evaluation of the function. So you get eight minus two times three. So we get eight minus six. The limit should be two, which is exactly what you expected right here, right? Um, the y coordinate. Great. Now that's if we that's if we're trying to evaluate or that's that is if we want to compute a limit when we're not near the switching numbers. You just look at what's going on in that part. When it comes to piecewise function, the switching numbers are the most interesting because that's where it switches behavior. Um, so you'll notice with this function, if you take, first of all, f of 4 in this situation is undefined. It does not exist. The domain doesn't tell you what to do when x equals 4. We can do when x is bigger than 4, when x is less than 4, but not when x is for itself. That we can still consider the limit in this situation. Because if we want to compute the limit, take the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x, what's that going to equal? Well, it turns out that if you approach from the left versus approaching from the right, you get a different approach because of this piecewise nature of the function. So let's explore that for a little bit. If we consider the portion to the left, if you take the approach to the left of 4, then the function thinks you're a line, and so the approach will be that of a line. Take the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f of x. This is going to behave just like the left portion of 4. So that is, as you approach 4 from the left, this will look like 8 minus 2x. But as this is a linear function, um, the function, the limit will be the evaluation of the function, as we saw in previous videos for lecture 10 right here. So we get 8 minus 2 times 4. You're going to get 8 minus 8. You're going to get 0. So the left-handed limit is going to be 0. So as you approach... As you approach x equals 4 from the left, we think y will approach 0. All right. What about if we approach it from the right? If we approach from the right, on this portion of the graph, we actually think we're a square root function. So if you approach from the right, we think it's going to behave like the square root of x minus 4. In which case, then in that situation, we get the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x. This will then look like the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of the square root of x minus 4, which by the limit properties we've seen previously, uh, we can actually evaluate this function at x equals 4. We get the square root of 4 minus 4, which is going to be the square root of 0, which is 0. And so as we approach 4 from the left, we see that y will also approach 0. And you'll notice that these two limits are in agreement. The left-handed limit says it should be 0. The right-handed limit says it should be 0. And since the limits both think they should be 0, we see that the limit of f of x is going to be 0 here because the two, the, the both one-sided limits agree. Let's take another example. Let's take the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x. You'll notice that the typical absolute value function itself is naturally a piecewise function. You know, its graph makes that classic V shape, right? Like so, right? We see that the absolute value function, it's a piecewise function, right? It looks like x when x is greater than or equal to 0. It looks like negative x when x is less than, uh, less than 0. Excuse me. Um, and so if we want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x, well, we consider the left-handed limit as we approach 0 from the left of the absolute value of x. This will look like the limit of just negative x as x approaches 0 from the left. That'll look like negative 0, which is equal to 0. Um, on the other hand, if we take the limit 
as x approaches zero from the right of the absolute value of x, this will be just the same as the limit of x as x approaches zero, and we see that's equal to zero. So again, like the other example, the left-handed limit and the right-hand limit both agree they both are zero. So the limit of the absolute value of x as x approaches zero will be itself zero.